Hello, everybody. This is Marshall Poe. I'm the editor of the New Books Network, and I'd like to direct your attention to a podcast series that we're featuring. It was produced by Brian Collins, and it's called A Very Square Peg. And it's about a fellow named Robert Eisler. You may never have heard of Robert Eisler. He was an Austrian Jewish polymath, and he made contributions to a remarkable number of fields including mythology and comparative religion, gospels, monetary policy, art history, history of science, psychoanalysis, politics, astrology, the history of currency, and value theory. He lectured all over the place. He spent 15 months in Dachau and Buchenwald, and he was something of a character. If you've ever heard S-Town, the podcast series S-Town, he reminds me a little bit of the figure that is featured in S-Town. He really did just about everything, and his life is absolutely fascinating. Brian's done a great job of putting together what we know about Eisler, and the series itself is really quite remarkably interesting. I hope that you listen to it. It's easy to listen to all nine episodes of A Very Square Peg. It's available on all the major podcast apps, and that includes Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Stitcher and Google Podcasts. If you go to the NBN website, you'll see a large icon that says A Very Square Peg. If you click on that, it will give you all the options available to subscribe to it and listen to it. I hope you take the opportunity to listen to the series. It's really quite wonderful. A bit of a departure for us. We hope to be doing more series like this, and we'd love to hear what you think about it. Thanks very much. Hello, and welcome to New Books in Photography. I'm Lorena Turner, one of the hosts of the channel. I'm a lecturer in the communication department at the California State Polytechnic University in Pomona, California, and I'm also a project-based photographer. Recently, I spoke with Gabrielle Jones about his new book of images called Splashes, which was published by RVB Books of Paris in late of 2018. Splashes is a kind of experiment in image making and storytelling that employs a visual language that if you were using a cell phone camera in the early 2000s, you will recognize. Never interacting with his subjects directly, Gabrielle employs the codes of voyeurism in the images in his book. The images and splashes focus not on the subjects that were placed directly in front of him or his camera, but instead on the backdrop of the social situations of which he was a part. Over the course of several evening, evenings, Gabrielle invited friends to pretend pose for him, which allowed him to steal the situations that were taking place behind them. The photographs taken with an early cell phone camera have, for the most part, been reframed so as to show only the situations and compositions that originally interested him. This tight cropping resulted in highly pixelated images, which sometimes he retouched to further accentuate accentuate the strangeness of the scenes that he collects. Gabrielle is a visual artist. He draws upon currently popular technology and media in his work. His photography, video, and drawings evolve around such theme as pseudonyms, a patriotism, geography, science, paleontology, and time. In 2011, he photographed Arcade Fire's eight album covers for the suburbs, and in collaboration with them, won a Grammy Award for Best Record Packaging of 2012. In 2010 and 2014, Gabrielle also curated an exhibit called The Pseudonym Project in New York and Paris, in which he invited a series of established and emerging artists such as Robert Berry, Liam Gillick, Melanie Bonaggio, and Joseph Marzola, as well as Jonathan Monk, to create new pieces under pseudonyms. At the end of the exhibit, their actual names were disclosed. His photographs have been exhibited internationally. Gabrielle lives and works in Paris and New York. Enjoy our conversation. My name is Gabriel Jones. <laughs> I'm a visual artist. I work with images. I, I don't really think about photography that much. I think more in, in, uh, with the term of image. So uh, for me, uh, this means that I'm interested in appropriation of of images as well as uh, creating my own images. And it's also considering the fact that uh, photography is is uh, is transforming itself uh, and it's becoming something else right now, I think, uh, and mixing itself with other mediums. Uh, for instance, installation, so photogra- photography installation, 
or even performance. Uh, I consider the medium of performance uh, both in taking the photograph and uh, also as having models that are perf performing for you. So there's all, all types of um, uh, new, new uh, mediums to consider, in, in, uh, in my opinion. Um, so I'm more a visualist uh, than photographer, as per se. I started doing photography since I was a kid. So basically, I was interested in um, the medium uh, in more of a traditional way at the beginning, uh, shooting film, uh, having more uh, of a training that was kind of a traditional uh, training. Uh, and then it started to to move when I started to, when I actually moved to New York. So I, I actually am I'm from Montreal, basically. And uh, I moved to Brooklyn, um, uh, in, I think in 2006 or seven, something like that. And I, I stayed there for at least seven years or so. And so um, I had various, um, <clears throat> various uh, work experiences that were very nourishing for me over there. So I, I considered this as part of my education somehow. Okay. Uh, I had um, two solo shows at, at, my, at my New York gallery that was representing me at the time when it was still open, uh, just before the, uh, the big crash, a uh, financial crash. Um, uh, which was uh, Priska Juska in, in uh, Chelsea in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I also uh, started uh, to be interested in uh, uh, other people's work, of course. And uh, my, my German gallery, Bugdan and Keimer in Dusseldorf, uh, put me in contact with uh, uh, two of his uh, representing artists, which are Robert Barry and William Wigman. Uh, and they're in New York, and so um, I, I had the opportunity to work with Robert Barry um, a few times as, as a, somehow a curator, if I may say so. Oh. I created a few shows, um, and, uh, and also I invited as well uh, William Wegman when I curated the show in Paris as well uh, to show his early video works from the, early, uh, from the 80s which are hilarious. I love them. <laughs> I, I love them too. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're you, if you only know his photographic work, which is later, it comes as a surprise, I think, how great his video work is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got a great sense of humor. Uh, so yeah, but uh, it's bizarre because no one knows that work really. I mean, it's not as popular as his it's photography, uh, it's photography. Yes. right? Yeah. yeah, and so uh, and, and also Robert Barry influenced me a lot in in um, in well in 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 bringing me new perspectives and and seeing new ways of of uh, considering uh, conceptual art and uh, photography as well, and so. Uh, so yeah, I think there's like there were really interesting and strong moments for me uh, um, in New York. So and then I started to curate my first show in New York that was called the Pseudonym Project, and um, that project is ongoing uh, still and it's growing every year. Uh, it's it's a project where I invited. Uh, 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 emerging artists uh, as well as internationally established artists to create new work on a limited edition print, uh, a multiple, um, a new work using a pseudonym and the real names are disclosed at the closing reception of the show. All the prices are the same of each print so the viewer actually does doesn't really know how to evaluate who did what. They just know that some of the artists have exhibited at the Tate Museum, MoMA, and some of them are just coming out from art school. And so, um, so that game was actually a really interesting game to do in New York. And uh, and so I cure. I'm I, now there's actually seventeen prints, seventeen different artists that are. Uh, accumulated with that project that I showed later on in, in, in Paris and also at my German gallery in Düsseldorf. We got to 
um, the end of the pseudonym project. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. And I, I wanted to first um, ask you to describe your book. Um, and then I have a very specific question about it. The book is actually a book that was uh, that started uh, in 2004, and I didn't know at the beginning it was a be it was going to be a book, but it lasted until 2018, and I'm actually still working on the same project. Perhaps there's going to be an extra, another book in that uh, regard, the same project, or perhaps a, another exhibition or something like that. Um, the book actually started. Uh, when I had my first uh, phone camera. Uh, remember when we didn't have <laughs> phone cameras? <laughs> Smartphones. Yep, uh, I yeah, do. but even before the smartphones, you know, it was really like the, the really beginning, uh, before the smartphone phones existed, uh, uh, I started doing these photos uh, randomly um, in different parties uh, in, when I was living in Brooklyn, Montreal. Mm -hmm. And um, and when I was traveling as well in Paris and in, in, and then in Marseille, so these photos are actually um, uh, constructed uh, in a way that that I I use fake models. Uh, I use usually use uh, friends. I ask friends to pose for me um, to fake pose for me. Let's say, mm -hmm. in order to to uh, disengage whatever is happening behind them. So in a party, let's say I, I go into a, a loft party, um, I have my, my roommate with me and uh, uh, I ask her to pretend to, you know, to go there, to do this and to the, do that. But I'm actually interested in two specific persons in the background and I don't want them to know that they're being photographed. So, uh, so they can continue whatever's happening that looks weird. And so uh, I'm interested in these micro events that are happening in the background. And so when you shoot someone like that, everyone in behind it, uh, at least more before, they didn't feel uh, concerned and so they didn't feel photographed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I started doing that, it worked well before, you know, it was before Facebook as well, you know, so uh, so there wasn't these, this idea of being tagged into photo party party photos and and being uh, you know hashtagged or whatever. So mm -hmm. so people were a lot more um, uh, disengaged with with with, what, with the person photo photographing in front of them. Um, and so basically, I'm interested in what we don't see, what's outside the frame. Um, I don't know if it, if it, you know, and so and so, uh, so let's say you've got this, uh, you got my model, my f fake model, and then you've got the little scenario happening in the back, lower left part of the photograph. Well, then I will recrop that area in uh, in uh, in what I consider to be aesthetically interesting, mm -hmm. and um, I will uh, recrop and then uh, enlarge the photo. Uh, and and so it becomes automatically pixelated, and the pixels are, are quite big on certain images. They they they're like a sixteenth of an inch, or something oh. like two millimeters uh, square, uh, four four square millimeters, and so it varies, you know. And also, what's interesting, it also it varies depending on the technology uh, of the of the phone itself. So. So all these these uh, digital um, phones are actually evolving, and so as it goes, you've got a better, let's say, quality. The pixels edges are, you know, this is more like a technical aspect that I'm not really interested. And in. for me, it wasn't really a technical observation about the technical limitations of the cam phone cameras that, uh, themselves. But it was mostly this idea of being able to do photos uh, and to consider the action itself as almost as a performative action um, because there's um, this uh, process being uh, engaged of pretending to have that model, to direct a fake model, and also to be really aware about other elements that are in the background that are not necessarily easy to grasp. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So, so that, so on the pages of your book and your book is called splashes, the yeah. pages of your book, each page is entirely filled with one enlarged image, or now I know that it's one enlarged section of an, of an original image. Yeah. So that, so that the, um, yep. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so there, that's the, I don't know if you had the opportunity of seeing it at uh, Printed Matters uh, or Dash with Books, but um, just to give you an idea, this is the thickness of the cover. It's the, the publisher actually did the really nice work. Uh, his idea was actually to have these really thin uh, sheets of paper that are glossy and uh, enhancing the saturated colors mm -hmm. and also um, making sure that people understand it's a, you know, a statement to have this decision of cropping and enlarging and having really large pixels. And so this, this fragility of these, uh, you know, these thin glossy pages in the middle being protected by this really hard in the, see this, the thickness of the book like this. Right. The thickness, it looks like from, from, um, because people listening to this won't be able to see the of picture. Course. <laughs> so, uh, so it looks like the the um, the depth of the cover is about would you say like an eighth of an inch, or maybe. Um, uh, honestly, I'm kind of forgetting about the inches. Inch. Right. I, well, it's actually it's more like two millimeters thick. Two millimeters. So thick. I guess it would be an eighth of an inch or something like that. Right. It's, it's quite thick, you know, and it's rigid cardboard, so it uh, doesn't bend at all. There's no flexibility. Right. And, um, and, then the pa and then by contrast, the pages on the inside are, very th are much thinner. Yeah. And, the and they're, are, kind of, they're very glossy, it looks like, too. Yeah. That was a decision by, uh, by the, the publisher, RVB Books, here in Paris. Um, the, 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 the two uh, directors are Mathieu Charon and Rémy uh, Faucheux, uh, and they, they really had this idea to, to have this uh, contrast between the fragility of the, of the images inside and, uh, yeah, and the saturation of the colors um, with the glossiness of the paper quality of it. And also there's also the orange fluorescent um, inside oh, designs. And, and papers. On exactly. the cover, right, and the binding too has that same bright orange. It looks yeah. like it covers as well. It's a very, it's a very beautiful object. Yeah, I, I'm really happy about this project. It's, they did a really nice job. That's really, really nice. It's curious to me. One of the first things you said in the interview was you said that um, you prefer to think of photographs or photography now as images, and um, how images and image making is moving into these different areas um, and so it's curious to me that why uh, why why you would make a book right because the book mm -hmm. is such an old format mm -hmm. of, um, presentation right mm -hmm. such an old structure and and uh, so I was wondering um, if you could speak to that oh yeah of course well I think that uh, the book exists by itself as a as a project uh, they are for me uh, a, an art piece, uh, rep reproductive art piece by itself. Uh, an art, uh, you said it. The term is a, a book object, and so it's an art, uh, an artist book. Um, and so the prints are actually sometimes the original prints. First of all, are not necessarily all the same cropping. I, I recrop the images in order to fit them on these um, standard pages, uh, which are actually a little bit larger than 11 by uh, 87, uh, 80 le uh, letter for the letter format paper. Mm -hmm. um, so in that regard, they, they, some of the images are not the same cropping as the uh, as if I would do an exhibition in a in a gallery space. So I think it exists besides it uh, as a second, a second project, let's say, parallel project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the idea of, uh, of photography evolving, I think that uh, books should still exist because they, 
I don't know. I, th I think it's a magical world. The publishing world is, is really a, a beautiful and magical world, I think. Maybe I'm being na naive, <laughs> but I, I still love, I love uh, uh, book objects, you know, like uh, uh, my publisher w was present at the last New York Arts Book Fair uh, at the, uh, at the, the, the PS1 in, in Queens. Sure. I think he's probably going to be there uh, again this year. I'm not too sure. Um, that happens in September, of it, mostly in September. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so, yeah. Well, he's, I think he's probably going to be at Unseen as well in Amsterdam, Offprint uh, in Paris, and, and he was in, at Offprint uh, in London as well at the Tate uh, that just happened. But So yeah, I think he, for me it's like this world of artist books uh, are, are specific. It's, it's really, uh, they're really interesting objects by themselves. They shouldn't disappear. Um, but photography itself, I think, is is uh, is different in the sense that I think that there's a technology is 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 of course evolving. There's a, mm, uh, people are more and more uh, curious about experience. Uh, so uh, the experience of, for instance, uh, 3D glasses or 3D cinema or um, and so there's all these new devices. I think that um, it's kind of a logical continuation um, of what we started being 2D images uh, going through 3D images and then perhaps we won't need any more images it's just going to be some kind of an experience um, data that we're going to be able to somehow live recorded data or something that that won't be uh, physical, so it would not be a physical image. So photography for me is, is just something that's probably going to transform itself into uh, an experience, seeing an experience and living an experience that you didn't experience, but someone else created to share some kind of an emotion afterwards. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense at all, but, and I don't know if it's too <laughs> if it's uh, too experimental for uh, for us to to conceive this at this point but i think it's probably going to move in that direction um but i don't see the painting disappeared even though photography arrived so it's why should photography uh, disappear as well so but it's right. just to move and transform itself i think well, maybe it will be that there will be there will be some people you know who are interested in the language of photography and evolving that language much as you know in the way that you're speaking and then there are people who are very interested in maintaining the representation representational quality of photography mm -hmm. you know the, the staticness of the image mm -hmm. you know that that because there's there's because the process i think process which is maybe why painting like if i well, i look at a lot of painters on instagram mm -hmm. you know and i think um there seem to be so many of them why is that you know, well, it's really about the process. It's about the pro. You know, the people are interested in engaging in the process of materials, mm. right? And I think people, there's, you know, there's a lot of in my world. What I've seen in New York this summer, in New York City, is a lot of people very interested in like taking workshops and being engaged with film photography because mm. of that process. You know, kind of understanding yeah. what that is and what that experience. You know, how can you master that? process mm. through the experience of using those tools yeah, of course yeah right so so while there'll be people who are maintaining a connection to photography that way you know then there are people who have been involved with it for a long time you know who are thinking about it in a different way in the way that you're talking about mm. yeah of course yeah um well not i'm not uh I'm not disengaging also from the traditional photography. I mean, it's also where uh, photographers started or became. I mean, it, it's the origins of it. So, of course, it, it shouldn't be denied or rejected. And so, yeah. So, um, so one thing, uh, a couple of things. Um about the book. So you have a, an essay that's written by Charlotte Cotton. Uh, uh, yeah, well, she did it. She, <laughs> amazing, because she she's such a, an important voice right now in photography. 
Well, she was one of my inspirations when I, I was a photography student, actually. Charlotte Coton actually was a, a source of inspiration because she, she, was a, she was part of the literature that I had as reference to photography. Oh. And she's, uh, she's actually, I think, a very interesting person that had a, this point of view of, of uh, photography being uh, more than just uh, the traditional uh, aspect of it. And, and so as a student, uh, she, she was quite uh, of a reference for me. Um, and she wrote a little text. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a really nice uh, gesture from her. I, I mean, um, I was really touched uh, by her little uh, little post on, on, on Instagram, and uh, yeah, she was really, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's how I found you. I found how I initially found out about your book. Ah. Her post. Yeah. Ah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did it, it. It did its job. That's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think I think uh, uh, she she um, she uh, got me to various different uh, new um, uh, viewers, if I can say so, because of course she has a very interesting uh, ba um, group of people that are following her, and I think that uh, it was really an interesting and nice uh, opportunity for me to meet to meet new people like this and like you, for instance. Right. Um, what are you What are you working on now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, I have a lot of projects right now, and I don't have enough uh, uh, assistance <laughs> to to uh, to work uh, in a productive way. And plus, I'm I'm in Marseille, and in Marseille, you start to slow down the pace, sure. and you start to be uh, a lot more. Um, influenced by nature and what surrounds you because I, I live really 20 meters away like 60 feet away from the sea uh, and I have the mountains on the other side so I actually started doing more photography naturally just like um, without without having a specific project and so um, so that emerged by itself um, when I'm in Paris, I'm mostly at my studio and managing and solving problems and issues. So I'm less productive when I'm in, in my Paris studio. Um, the thing, one of the next projects that I'm actually doing is a collaboration with um, a friend of mine, uh, Alexandre Belin, and uh, we're actually going to explore. Um, I'm going to appropriate myself some of his images and I'm going to paint on them and draw on them. And uh, it's going to be um, some kind of an exploration uh, in regards to um, an old uh, ritual that's thousands of years old, <clears throat> that um, mortuary uh, ritual. Uh, I can't really say too much at this point because it's not clear in our minds uh, on how it's going to happen, but uh, it's definitely going to be um, a teamwork and uh, and on, at this time I'm going to be the I'm not going to be the photographer I'm going to be just using and, and, and cutting out and drawing and, and so we're going to work on that it's on that project um, there's also. Uh, multiple other projects. I'm also teaching as well. Uh, I'm also a teacher in visual arts uh, in, in Paris and in, and also here in the south of France. Uh, this is also <laughs> taking a bit of time as you as you might know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess what what else am I working? I mean, I have too many things going on. I, I honestly I didn't expect uh, uh, I didn't know what I don't know what to answer. <laughs> <That's a> question. <laughs> and I'm also oh, yeah 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 I have this idea. I actually just finished a, finished a series of drawings based on on uh, on viral um, videos and viral viral photography. That's another element that's quite interesting for me is that um, amateur photography. Um, uh, the fact that people have their phones and cam everyone has a camera nowadays around the world. So we are starting to see things that 
we would never uh, imagine being able to see uh, in the past. Uh, we're discovering new elements, uh, for instance, uh, uh, we're discovering new animals or insects uh, just through tourists uh, taking photos of that or this in the jungle or something like that and posting it and then you've got scientists uh, uh, reacting to it and trying to figure out what is that, what is it doing, uh, new behaviors, uh, I mean, uh, Let's see, let's talk, uh, the, you know, the, um, uh, I don't know how to call, I think they're manta rays uh, or rays, you know, these, um, well, we didn't know they actually flew and I don't know if it's the right term uh, in French, you say the ray, une ray. Mm -hmm. And so are, these, are they sea creatures? Yeah, they're, you know, they, they have like these triangular wings. Right. You know, they, they're they like, they, they flap their wings, uh, they're triangular, and they have a tail sometimes. A small, like, um, like a short, uh, pointy tail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so we didn't know that these actually could fly uh, for, I, like, up to 30 or 40 feet or something like that. They could actually come out of the sea and, f and jump and fly and flap their wings and continue flying until they... They lost the, their thrust and then fell down to the sea again. Uh, we, saw, we discovered that because of tourism photography. And then there were scientists that actually confirmed that phenomenon through uh, future observations uh, from satellite images and other data. Wow. So, this, so this idea of me discovering, uh, I mean, we are discovering things like that uh, from amateur photography. And so uh, this idea of, of seeing an incredibly impossible or unimaginable things uh, that would uh, start to be available to our eyes through these billions of cameras and videos filming and, and shooting just right now as we're talking, I don't know how many millions of photos are being taken by, by multiple people. And so we're starting to see these on the, on the web and on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere. And so these images sometimes are actually, well, I'm interested in the quirky, funny, strange um, images that I then uh, utilize to draw and paint, uh, represent them. So I, I use these images and then I reinterpret them as drawings and paintings. So uh, um, you can see some of these on my website, actually. It's, uh, it's a series called uh, Something Greater. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so this for me is another way of uh, going through another, uh, taking photography and bringing it in, a, in another dimension. Of course, it's not photography at the end, but it's based on, a, on an actual photograph, uh, an actual image. And that image is just, you know, the perfect representation of being on the right moment, at the right moment, at the right place, mm -hmm. and privileging some kind of a phenomenon or event that is incredibly, incredibly rare to, to see. And, uh, and so this phenomenon itself is, is something that I'm interested in, too. So I'm, I'm looking at that um, series right now on your website. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm curious, my, the question that I have about that is why, um, like, what about, why make those into drawings? Like, what is that? Is that a way of highlighting that moment? Is it a way, I mean, the, your, I guess the alternative would be to, to um, appropriate it and make it like a print, you know, mm, but, yeah. but why, so why introduce like your interpretation into the, the that image? Um, well, sometimes these images uh, needs to be, I mean, the point uh, had to be emphasized, I think like the, the specific topic or the specific gesture. Some of them are actually, most of them are actually from video stills that I did. I mean, uh, that I actually selected. So they're also from video. So I had to stop at the specific frame with uh, the specific gestures and, uh, and to capture, like if you see that guy cutting the girl's hair with his ax. Yes. So it's like this ax barber right. <laughs> or ax uh, hairstylist well I, then i decided you know he wasn't really happening it wasn't really happening in the, in um 
uh, you kind of see uh, mountains in the background. I mean, th there wasn't in reality. That, that wasn't there. Background. So I, I uh, as the project grew, I started to include uh, recurrent types of backgrounds, and also um, I was interested in the in the lines as well. You can see that there's uh, the line of the mountain that actually. Um, reaches the bottom line of her t-shirt and so it actually connects and so these elements and also on her shoulder the line of the mountain also um, reaches her shoulder and so these ambiguous um, connections are, are interesting as well um, sometimes I would move, move a little bit the body language I would mm. let's say organize the body, body language in a way that um, that things are clear. I mean, the the girl is smiling or laughing, and uh, and and the guy is really serious, and he's very st strong looking, and he's very muscular, and with his axe and cutting the. And you you can see definitely that the, the, there's something happening, but it's not negative. It's 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 actually funny and and bizarre in the same time. And you've got this contrast of action being so strong and and hard but for a super precise result and super fragile result as well you know using a hacks to, to do <laughs> haircut is is quite yeah. specific but it actually happened it's, it's it's this guy in russia that does that um and uh, the girls are all super happy with the result <laughs> so <laughs> it seems to be a, a good technique but it's so improbable um so so that's also something that I'd like I'd like to do like if you look at the the image of that uh soccer game mm -hmm. cars and uh um this uh, how do you call that the caterpillar mm -hmm. actually the the caterpillar is actually the the goaler <laughs> right and they're playing with a humongous soccer ball that's probably like I don't know, six to ten feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. So it's completely surrealistic, but it actually happened. It's a it's a, a film still also that I did. But then you can start to see again the lines of the mountains confusing, confused with the lines of the cars of the tire, you know, the lines of the tire cars that are going in the field and everything. So. Um, so this surrealistic uh, point of view mixed up with the completely uh, improbable, absurd situation that is real, uh, for me this equation was really interesting. So it needed, in my case, it needed to be um, interpreted uh, and modified sometimes from the original photography. I see. It also occurs to me too, as I'm looking at these images, that that we all, we all, you know, these videos are almost like, um, these types of videos are like, kind of like currency for us. Like we acquire them, we acquire the knowledge of them and we, then we use them to communicate like mm. in shorthand with each other. Right. Did you like, did you see the video where, you know, this happened or did you, you yeah. know, or, or you send it to someone and then you're suddenly, you know, you both share in yeah. that knowledge and it becomes a shorthand of knowledge and conversation. Um, yeah. so it's almost like you're creating like a, in a way, like an index, like a your Somehow, your own yeah. index, right? Of these um, <clears throat> these kinds of shared experiences or shared currency, mm. which I think is kind of an interesting yeah. an interesting idea. It's um, also it, ethnological, uh, if I can say. There's human behavior studies somehow, right? <laughs> yes, if you think about it, they're like real phenomenons. But uh, you know, I think it's also that little perception as well that has to be considered. Sure. Well, I like I like too that your <coughs> that some of the your choices some of the choices are um, things that are clearly um, uh, like performative, like in the way that uh, splashes had this performative element, right? So you're mm. so I'm thinking of the drawing of the person who's lying on a landscape, a beach landscape, and their body mimics the. Um, the rock landscape that's behind them. Let me see that. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, that's the. It's called beer yoga. Yes, it's <laughs> called beer yoga. That's correct. Right, I see that. Yeah. 
so that's uh, so that's so that has that you know clearly that was a set i mean i think it was set up you know like that the, it has that performative element to it yeah like the quality that you know you are kind of representing in your book as well to, yeah seems like yeah, to me yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, we don't know if it's a setup. Right, or not. we don't know. That's, ultimately, the, that's right. also the uh, the interesting element. Sure. Maybe sometimes there's lots of improbable coincidences that that happens, you know. Right. So that the belly of that guy, the beer belly of that guy, actually matches with the mountains in the background, and the shadow in the mountain matches with his with his uh, hair um, shape. And uh, and so I added that beer bottle, and I called it beer yoga, which is actually a, a real phenomenon as well, which is an improbable phenomenon. But uh, there's apparently. <laughs> well, I heard about it. Apparently, it's a German um, new style of yoga. It's called beer yoga, and I don't really know why, but it apparently has that existence. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, something to Google <clears throat> later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and about the man, manta ray as well, the flying... Uh, yes, manta. yes, yeah. Yes, we'll out. have to Google that later as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you very much for, uh, for talking with me about your book, Splashes. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, object and just filled with a lot of um, interesting ideas. And, I, um, and I'm really happy that I got the chance to talk with you. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you. That was Gabrielle Jones discussing his new book, Splashes, published by RVB Press. You can see more of his work at his website, which is gabriellejones.net. New Books and Photography podcasts are hosted by me, Lorena Turner, remotely and edited by me as well. If you have a new photography book or a book related to photography that's coming out and would like to talk to me, talk with me about it for about an hour, send me a message through the New Books and Photography Facebook page. This goes for monographs, theoretical texts, as well as books on the history of photography.